Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Jay Moore. I am uh, both the pastor of a church called The Central Place in Tucson, Arizona, but I'm also the founder of a group called The Ordinary Christian, and we exist, and my ministry is to encourage, equip, and uh, empower God's people to live powerful missional lives uh, that brightly shine the light of Christ. And today, I want to share with you just a, a little devotional, a thought for you to consider, because I know that many people who are who love Jesus you know are not involved in the mission of Christ of making disciples uh, because they they feel like they have too many personal weaknesses that keep them from that whether it's physical weakness emotional weakness mental weakness whatever it is they they feel like they're, they're weak in certain areas and it really keeps them from that today I want you to consider this thought and I want to read you a passage of scripture that will help you uh, encourage you hopefully empower you to you know get out there and, and just join Christ on his mission Here's the thought I want you to consider. Your weaknesses are not a liability. Did you get that? Your weaknesses are not a liability, especially when it comes to the mission of Christ, but they are actually an asset in doing Christ's mission, joining Christ on his mission. So let me read it again. Your weaknesses are not a liability, but an asset in joining Christ on his mission. I hope that that's sinking into you. The things that you consider to be weaknesses, the things that you consider to be liabilities, those weaknesses are actually liabilities that prevent you from you know, being a, a tremendous service to Christ, are not. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10, and hopefully this will change your thought a little bit. He says, my weakness is sufficient for you. Now, understand, the part that I'm picking up here is, is God's response to Paul praying three times to remove this thorn from his flesh. He says, God says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, Therefore, I will boast all the more, this is Paul speaking, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What a powerful passage of scripture. Three things I want you to consider real quickly. First of all, God is telling Paul, and he's telling Paul so that he can also tell us in his word. He says, my grace is sufficient. You don't have to wait until all of your weaknesses uh, are removed before you join Christ on his mission. Matter of fact, you don't have to wait at all for those weaknesses to be removed because they may never be removed. But here's the assurance you have. You don't have to have them removed. Why? Because God's grace is sufficient. His unmerited favor, even in the midst of your persecutions, in the midst of your weaknesses, in the midst of the insults, the calamities, you know, those things that are difficult for you and you just feel like you can't deal with. God says, man, you join me on my mission and being a part of what I'm doing, my grace will see you through. That's what you need. You don't need perfect conditions. You need the perfect God who can give you his grace even when all of the conditions of your life are not perfect. So that's the first thing. Think about that. God's grace is sufficient. Even with all of your weaknesses, with all of your uh, difficulties uh, and things that you consider to be liabilities, which they really aren't, God's grace is sufficient to go past that, all right? Here's the second thing. Paul says, in light of God's understanding of God's grace, he says, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses. Uh, this is a total way of changing your thinking it is it's a it's a uh you know counterintuitive way of looking at your your persecutions your your imperfections uh your weaknesses uh most of the time we moan about them we groan about them we complain about them paul says but in light of the fact of god's grace is more than sufficient i'm going to instead of you know complaining about my weaknesses i'm going to boast about my weaknesses uh gladly boast gladly about it not 
you know, begrudgingly. I'm going to boast gladly about it. Why? Because the Bible says right there at the next part, so the power of Christ may rest upon me. It is in the boasting. It is in the glorying in your weaknesses with Christ's um, grace being sufficient. You have enough. Uh, next, he says, here's the, here's the third point. He says, I am content, Paul saying, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Not only is he going to boast about them, but he says, I'm going to choose to live a content life with all of these things part of my life. I'm content with the weaknesses. I'm content with the insults. I'm content with the hardships, persecutions, calamities. This, again, is counterintuitive because so many times what we want to do is I say, okay, God, I'm going to join you, and I've got all these difficulties. I've got all these weaknesses. I've got all of this hardship coming upon me. I'm going to join you, but I'm not going to be happy about it, and I'm still wanting you to remove these things from me. I'm, not, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to feel good about it. Paul says, no, change your attitude so that instead of, you know, doing it begrudgingly, do it with contentment. You're content in them. If God takes it away, great. If God doesn't take it away, great. He may never take away your weaknesses. Are you going to choose to live a discontent life because he doesn't? Or in light of God's grace, are you going to choose to live a content life? So I want to end with this, going back to my point. Your weaknesses are not a liability in joining Christ on his mission, but they are actually an asset in being used by God in doing a powerful work. Because in the midst of serving God in your weaknesses, in, in all of the persecution that goes with all of that, God's strength is manifested. People are seeing God at work through you. Not you at work for God, but God at work through you. And they glorify our Father in heaven even more. All right, this is Jay Moore. I hope that encourages you. Take care. God bless. We'll talk to you later.